Good morning. My name is Mr. Ishengoma. Today we are going to look at a flow diagram. Flow diagram is a section formed under functions. Flow diagram is formed inside functions. So basically, flow diagram shows us the creativity that leads to the formation of a function. The creativity that leads to the formation of a function. Some other groups call it a function machine. Some other people call it function machine. But for us, we are calling it a flow diagram. So when you look at the first example, the flow diagram explains to you how the equation statement was created starting from the position of the x. So if you look at this first example here, we have got 3x minus 1. When you look at this x here, the first thing that has been done to x, this x has been multiplied by by three, then after multiplying by three, then we subtract one. So that's exactly what we have here. First we have x, then we have multiply by three. Then after multiply by three, definitely we get three x. Then after you subtract one and we get, 3x minus 1. So this is the exact meaning of flow diagram. Flow diagram shows us the creation of the equation. Now let's proceed and we see the flow diagrams for the next day. functions. Right, number two. We said a flow diagram starts with an x. Then at x, you look, what is happening to x? what is happening to x so if you look at this question here you'll see x is being multiplied by two x is being multiplied by two so when you multiply x by two there you will definitely get 2x then after getting 2x you look again these 2x here what do we do to it next you realize we add five, you add five. Then after adding five, you will get three, sorry, two X plus five. That's not all. You can see there's a bracket. There's a bracket here and there's a bracket there. Then outside, we can see we have a square. So meaning the final activity is to square everything. So you write square everything. And when you square everything, you end up with the formation of our, our function. So this is what we call a flow diagram. Now let's move on to the next example. Example three, we have X. So we shall begin with X. So when you look at x here, the first thing we do to x, if you can see properly, x is being multiplied by negative seven. So we shall say multiply by negative seven. So after multiplying by negative seven, we shall get negative seven x, all right. Now, since negative has gone this side, means here in the middle we are left with plus, right? Because we know if we are to write this, we can write like this, like that, over three. So meaning the next activity here, we shall add, we shall add five. And hence after adding five, we shall get five minus seven X. And finally, is divide three, you can see three is alone down. So three is the last thing. So we shall write here, 
divide by three and we get the full function given to x and this is how we shall write it this is what we call a flow diagram it's flowing from the position of x until the whole function obtained let's move on to the next example here we have our function it is there this is our function when you look at it the first thing that has been done to a function is this which is multiply i'm writing the multiply in short form because it's a bit long and it consumes space so you can write the whole statement multiply in full uh, in full letters so we multiply by five and after multiplying by five we get 5x then after multiplying you can see the next thing is to add five there to add four thing so i'll write add four and when i add four i will obtain 5x plus four okay i have one more example here this one is a bit long but we shall get through with it so let's begin from x we multiply by three multiply by three there then when you multiply by three you get three x then after multiplying by three you add one you add one after adding one we shall get three x plus one then after getting three x plus one the next thing if you look properly it is the square because all this here is inside so the next thing is the square so we shall square good when you look properly you see my space is over and i just did some part so it's fine even if the space is over in your book like that you have to continue from the next below but you always must start from this side there okay so the next thing here is again we have to multiply multiply by four because after the square you can see here there's this four here which is outside so we have to multiply by four and when we multiply by four we shall get something like four bracket three x plus one bracket square good after that we have another last thing here that is add add five then by doing that we shall get our final statement and that is four bracket three x plus one square then plus five so this is how we draw a flow diagram so even if the flow diagram is very long you don't have to worry you just proceed below the space which was it was there you just proceed below below the space all right so let's move on to the next chapter now after seeing a flow diagram we need to now use the flow diagram after seeing what a flow diagram means we need to use the flow diagram in finding inverse of a function we need to use the flow diagram in finding inverse of a function previously we found inverse previously we found inverse using algebra we found inverse using algebra now we are going to find inverse using flow diagram this is how we do it first first you give your flow diagram like that the first statement here is multiply three after multiplying three you get three x then subtract one when you subtract one you get three x minus one okay here is the most important after drawing your flow diagram the way i've done it we looked at inverse and we said inverse is 
the complete is the complete opposite. Inverse is the complete opposite of the previous. So if we have got our flow diagram like this, the next thing we do, when we began to write the flow diagram, remember, we began from there. And this was our first activity, and this was our second activity. When we want to find the inverse, we begin from the end, this side. And look at the arrows. The arrows are going this direction, this way. Now, for inverse, your arrows will take the back direction. Remember, what we're doing is the complete opposite. Then, your last activity was subtract one. When you're doing inverse, subtract one will be your first activity and it will be on its opposite. So instead of subtract one, we shall say add one. And when we add one, we shall get x plus one. Then the next activity is uh, before it was multiply three, but now it will be divide by three. And hence we shall get x plus one divided by three. And because that's all, so this is our answer. So we shall write our answer. There are four. We shall write our answer. There are four. The inverse of our function f will be x plus one over three. So this is our answer there. Good. If you have not got it well, we are going to example two. There we go. First, we give our flow diagram, right? We give our flow diagram. That is multiply by negative seven. We shall get negative seven X. The next, we add five. We shall get five minus seven X. And the next we divide by three and we get our answer as five minus seven X is over three. So that is the flow diagram. So next we have to use this flow diagram. We need to use this flow diagram to find the inverse. And in order to find the inverse, we have to do the complete opposite. Start from the end and the last activity divide three, we do as multiply, multiply three. And when we multiply three, we shall get three X. The next activity is add five. We shall subtract five. And when we subtract five, we shall get three X minus five. And the next activity here is multiply negative seven. But for us, we shall divide negative seven. And when we divide negative seven, we shall get 3x minus 5 over negative 7. So there are four. Our final answer will be like this inverse of g is 3x minus 5 over minus minus 7. This is how we find inverse using a flow diagram. Okay, last but not least. Here is our long statement. First thing you have to draw its function, its function flow diagram. As we said, first is multiply by three. We're writing the flow diagram. And when I multiply by three, I get three X. The next is add one. When I add one, I get three X plus one. The next is square. And when I square, I get three X plus one squared. Then after, then after squaring, the next thing is multiply four. So I multiply by four and I get four bracket three X plus one square. Then next as the last one, I add five. Then after adding five, I'll get 
four bracket, three X plus one square plus five. That is our flow diagram. Now we need to use this flow diagram to find the inverse. We need to use this flow diagram to find the inverse. And this is how we go about with it. So I start from the big end here. But remember, my last activity is this one here, add five. So what I'll do, I will subtract five. And when I subtract five, I get x minus five. Then the next one from the last one is multiply by four. So what I'll do, I will divide by four. And I will get x minus five divided by four. The next activity is this square here. Me, I'll do square root, square root, because the opposite of square is to square root. So that means I will square root everything, x minus five over four. Okay, then the next one, I'll start now from the end this way. And the next one is here, add one. What I'll do is, I will subtract one. But remember, because everything is inside the square root, you must show that this add five, add one must be completely outside the square root. So I will keep outside, add one. I'll keep outside, add one. Okay, after add one, the last one here, which was officially the first one, the last one is multiply three. So what I'll do, I will divide by, I'll divide by three. And when I divide it by three, means I have now x minus five over four outside plus one. And now everything I'll divide by three. So this will be the inverse for this function. So I'll write the final answer. There are four, the inverse of x, the inverse of x, Oh, thank you. One person has reminded me I made an error here. Let me correct it. I wrote subtract one, but instead I did add one. Thank you, let me correct it. So I said subtract one, so I have to keep subtract one. Thank you so much. So now our final answer is x minus five over four and outside is minus one, then everything over three. So this becomes our inverse of this function. This is how we find inverse of a function using flow diagram.